So thank you very much for, for your warm words. Uh, I would like, first of all, to thank ICD and Mark organizing such an event. And there is a possibility to come to share your views with the people and to understand what is right, what is wrong, what is going to happen. So, <clears throat> unfortunately, I cannot show the slides because there is some technical problem. Maybe during the presentation it will flash on again. So my topic today is the globalization or regionalization. What is happening in the world? How to judge on that? Huh? Can we say that we are, we are uh, kids of a global world or we are becoming kids of a regional world? world you know. Uh, this is just an economic, uh, an, uh, uh, economic investigation and economic research based on the economic based uh, uh, economic facts i do believe for a long term for a long term economy has an advantage in front of politics for a short term of course politics you cannot um, you, uh, you you cannot de overcome the path the monopoly of a politics you know but let's have a look what is happening in the world for a long term. Uh, uh, well, in general, the war in Ukraine is just an excuse for uh, the globalization, which began in, to my mind, began, started to begin 2008. We started to realize in 2008, guys, what is happening? Why we have had this crisis? If it is global war, as was said by the very famous economists, so we, are we, we are going to see the end of the global crisis. But we have got this global crisis in 2008 in a severe ways. And nobody started to change, to fix it. Yes, there was a change in the United States. Obama came to be power, very intellectual personality, trying to understand to do what, as far as the US was the leader. But you know, nobody, nobody completed. Nobody started this job, uh, and people started to realize that the tendency of a regionalization is getting higher than the tendency of the globalization. What it means? Does it mean that the regionalization is not a globalization? A regionalization could be part of globalization, but the regionalization could also contradicting with the globalization. Yeah. Uh, uh, well. Uh, what is the economic base of a regionalization? First of all, the tendency of integration of in the production outstrip tendencies of division of labor. Last 200 years, the world was based on the deepening of the tendency of specialization of the labor division. If there is an ongoing process of labor division, we need each other because I, I produce something, you produce another thing, and we have to exchange. Last 150, 10, 200 years, the temps of growth of the world trade, they were always higher than the temps of the growth of the production. From 2%, the world trade became 30% of the world's GDP. And it was continuing to grow until the 2008. But starting from 2008, we see that even when the economy, world's economy is growing, the trade, the percentage of trade started to decrease. We have got several, several, several areas of the economy when the integration is higher than the specialization. By example, by example, production of iPhones, uh, electronic chips, etc., etc. By example, let's take a Samsung. The company is preferring to do everything. Have a look to the beginning of 20th century. The auto industry. Everybody was trying to specialize, to create a conveyor, to create a different parts, and then integrate the, team, the all of. Those, um, 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 uh, all of those units into the one process. Regional, regional processes started to suppress the global processes. Yes, we have EU. 
Well, what is EU, for example? It's a regional, it's a regional economic and political project. When you are EU member, another one is not EU member. In between you, there is a party. But EU is a successful case. It's a democrat. It's organized in a democratic ways. It's a supplying a lot of products, very intensively influencing on the world economic growth. There are, we started to realize at least there are eight other regional region, regional unions. Some of them are just in the process to be formed. For example. Well, Turkey is building, Turkey is building to round world. This is very, very obvious. They are creating one unique army. Russia, well, at the end I will talk on Russia. China is becoming to be the leader of another region. And they, they have on their mind not only China, continental China. Some strides we see on India. Well, having that India could be regional, regional power for Nepal, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, etc. I don't see any process in Africa. Maybe they have some. It's, it's, it's difficult to say. Maybe their production integration in Africa is not so high. They don't need that. Just recently, Anglo-Saxonic countries created AUKUS. is becoming very, very essential union. The United States, Canada, Britain. Australia and maybe even New Zealand. I don't see any processes in Latin America. Some countries are free, free in brackets, you know, like Japan, I don't understand, Iran, I don't, they don't find their place. I see that there is a regionalization in the Arab world. The question mark is, the, are they going to have one or two? Because they have two leaders, Egypt and Saudi Arabia. Well, the other thing, um, it is obvious that what you need to be a regional power. What is economic, in economic terms, a regional union? It, to be effective, at least it should have a, at least 300 million population. It should be, it should be, will more or less self-sufficient on the resources. It should have a territory no less than one million square kilometer. Well, well, and it should be able to specialize on the production of goods of services no less than 35, 40% of the of the world's of the world's production. For example, in the world now we are producing 15 approximately, namely, 15 million types of products. A regional union should be able to produce at least 5 million, 4 million, to be self-sufficient. Of course, there isn't any superpower able to produce 15 million products. But let's have a look to this chart. Well, uh, you don't, well, OK. In the United States, what happens in the United States, what, 25 years? This country is producing something like two and a half million type of products, types of products. 30 years ago, it means some 1919s, United States was each year increasing the nomenclature, the assortment, the types, the varieties of product by 5,000 products per year. Today, this figure became 70,000 within 25 years. What happened? Why in the United States people are not happy? They don't want to have a trade, by example, with Europe or with China. They are trying to increase their own capacity. And you know, that's, that, that's a tendency. I cannot make any comments. Well, as you, I'm trying to understand me here and trying to follow what, what will be the next step. Or Another issue is that uh, what will happen when these regions, at least we see the tendency of forming eight regions. This is the United States, China, India. Russia is trying to become again a regional leader. 
to run with Turkey leader, under Turkey's leadership, Saudi Ar Arabic countries uh, and Anglo-Saxonic countries, at least seven, are trying to form this regional po power. And I don't know what's going to happen in Africa or Latin America if there will be a leader or there, I don't know. It's still, I cannot judge, I don't have any enough facts. But this all regional units trying to have sufficient military capacity. And here is the question. This regionalization is going to deepen the peace processes in the world, or they are going to be dangerous fact for the world peace. That's the issue. So uh, epistemology of regional union showing the, the chain of following processes. First of all, this is free trade zone. They are countries are creating free trade zone. After free trade zone, they are creating custom unions. After custom unions, they are deepening again, creating economic unions. After economic unions, they are trying to have a political integration and creation of supranational bodies of political administration. And at the end, they are creating military alliances. That's a standard, and I can say that, you know, let's see, in fact, in fact, that's it. Uh, I already told you tendencies. And what happens, happens with Russia and Ukraine? With Ukraine and Russia? Believe me, I, as an intellectual, and as a person who in his life worked in Ukraine also 16 years as a professor of a university, I know the situation. I know the Ukrainian economy as my five fingers. I cannot say about the Ukrainian mentality. It is very, very, very rich one. And it is not the question just to understand. It's a little complicated issue. It's a, it's a nation with a, a huge culture. A nation, you, you cannot just understand the nation like this, you know. But the economy I know, and the, uh, uh, being economist for me is uh, it's easy to judge because processes are in the economy are more or less more or less the same in all over the world. What happened here? I, as an intellectual, I condemn aggression and violation. That's for sure. That's for sure. But what happened there, according to my mind, uh, Russia, generally, under this process is starting 208. It has three theoretical choices. Church theoretical. Well, the first cho choice is not a joke. It's a, it's a serious, it's serious, uh, to join EU. Nobody never was discussing why ja Russia cannot to join EU. Uh, the second, because Russia has not enough capacity to be a region. They have territory, big territory. They have mineral, mineral resources. They have mineral resources. By, but by example, they don't have enough population, 140, 150 million. The market is small. Internal consumption would be small. And this regional union created by Russia under the base of 140 million population, we can consider as a big member of globalization, not regionalization. And to my mind, Russia is started to create a separate union. First of all, take back the territories of the former Soviet Union. Uh, and here, Russia comes up against to resistance of two, 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 two blocks. Uh, EU, EU would like to be expanded on the east, and Turkish world, which becomes a main, main ally for Russia. With the war in Ukraine, Russia is, as it believes, is trying to regain the territory of Mala Russia with the Russian-speaking population. They don't care if these people, they, they, they want that or they don't want that. On Berlin 22. 
on, on, the, <laughs> on the strategic point of view, what is the uh, what what is the Russia's Russia's um, thinking on that? Then in 10, 12, 20 or thirty years, everybody will everything will be will be okay. At least they, they are going to uh, re, to be reunited the eastern part of Ukraine, and then they will see what they are going that what they can do, what they can do. Uh, under these tendencies, unfortunately, the role of the traditional international institutions is decreasing. For example, the role of European Council practically is zero. A lot of person, personalities being here, they know that how, how, how big was the role of the uh, European Council, you know? Okay, okay, you, look, you, you go for that, yeah, yes, you go that. Uh, uh, yeah, well, here we are here. Uh, the role of the UN institutions is decreasing. <clears throat> decreasing. People can ignore that. People can ignore that. By example, for uh, for the new war in Russia this year, the role of Red Cross is decreasing. It was not the case, by example, 30 years ago. Another issue is that the role, the WTO, well, the IMF and World Bank also is decreasing. I used to work two years in my life in the IMF, and I know that it was 1996, 1997, and I know that how powerful is this organization? It was good to come there to discuss your problems to find solution. Not all the time that was a successful, but you know, essential. How the World Bank's role is decreasing. And finally, the, the role of WTO, for what we were fighting. We were fighting. I was very young in 1990, living, traveling under the rounds of creating of WTO, it, at the very beginning that was a Uruguay agreement and then we have developed that the WTO, at the end of 90s it became a very powerful organization, now it's zero. In order to show that, in order to show that, just take what did this uh, US and China, China tensions, I'm not going to explain that here, there was uh, some acquisitions on the US side, and there was an explanation, respondents, China, et cetera, et cetera, but Mr. Trump decided in 2018 just to put tariffs on the old Chinese importation goods. Nowadays, by the way, Biden is trying to remove them or decrease them because uh, Elaine Yellen, she is a Minister of Finance of the United States, she said that we have inflation, but um, uh, high inflation ratio in the United States is not because of russia ukraine war. Of course, that includes that. But because of tariffs of China's, China's export into the United States, and she said we are going to remove them. Well, that will be good to remove any type of tariffs. But that was the case when, uh, when countries, and China reacted on that, putting, imposing, its own tariffs on the American importation from the United States. But that was the case when two countries, they say that we don't care you have veto or you don't have veto. We, the, well, we don't care that, guys. We are doing what we want to do to, to, do, to that with that, okay? Uh, here is the, the further explanation. By the way, I would like to, to, to show you one thing which shows proof of regionalization tendency. In 2018, four years ago, when United States started to put tariffs on the importation of Chinese goods, and China same, the say, did the same uh, towards to the American, American goods, you know, there was a question, who will be the winner? Who will lose? Of course, now we can say both countries, they have losses, but four years ago, Chinese economy, Chinese GDP was on the level of 67% of the GDP of the United States. Today, today, 
it is on the level of 78%. 78%. We can show very clear, reacting to the Mr. Trump's statements, that Mr. Trump, it was a wrong move for you. Of course, China loses something, but you, United States losses, they were much more, much more. That's clear. Well, maybe I cannot judge who is Trump, who is Biden, but Biden is much more clever saying that they have to remove that. They have to remove that. Because that was a big step towards to the regionalization. We have regions, and like this, traditions, even religions, you wanted to put into the economic policy, which is unacceptable for the world. Being a representative of a small country, well, I would be happy on the region globalization more than to the regionalization. Because on the globalization, we depend on the United States. But in the case of the regionalization, we are going to have a double dependency from the United Nations and from the regional power, dominancy of regional power. Then again, regionalization means that the time of a difficult, that the time of a difficulties for a small countries, these times are coming back. And then again, on this point of view, we see what is happening in Ukraine because of who has a regional power. He thinks that they can do what they want to do. What they want to do. Uh, no, in fact, that's, that's all. That's all. Thank you for your attention. Thank you again very much in the name of all of us. So now we can take questions. Uh, since I'm the moderator, we are going to start with students, obviously, and um, women first. Um, yeah, I do quota system, so um, I will prefer to have a woman student now to start, no? Okay, any other questions? Any other takers? No? Ah, okay, I'm, I, I saw one here. So, I'm going, so we are going to take three questions and um, then we're going to do an answer round and if we have time, we're gonna do a second round. So Jaffa, you have the word. Please introduce yourself as well. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry, my mic doesn't work. My name is Zafar Khojaif, I'm a student at ICD from Uzbekistan and I would like to ask for your opinion on uh, this difference that you uh, explain on globalization and regionalization, especially for Armenia in the sense of regional security. Because I know that this region, right now in the context of uh, events of the, that we had uh, these past few years, it's a very important question on whether or not do we rely on superpowers for um, regional security because I know Armenia is having some of the problems with uh, neighboring countries when it comes to uh, some of the regional problems. So I would say, do you really think that globalization will actually substitute the reliance and confidence in regional security for countries like Armenia and any other post-Soviet uh, Republic? Because, for example, I could say for my country, it is really hard to deny that we rely heavily on the regional security by the Russia. And what would be your opinion on this matter? Thank you. Wait, I'm going to collect three questions and I just realized that I didn't give you any paper or anything to record. So I'm, I'm doing that here by. So there was another question here and uh, Mark reminded us, introduce yourself and then ask your question. Sure. My name is Baha, uh, originally from Lebanon. So th thank you for the opportunity. My question is, uh, since you've talked about globalization, we've seen uh, countries like develop developing economies, of course, like uh, some of them are developed, like China, Russia, and Brazil, and South Africa, they have this kind of BRICS nation, which is more into the economic kind of bilateral uh, development together. And then we see other countries that are powerful, like G7, 
which represents a lot of, let's say, countries who have been powerful for a long period of time. Uh, let's say uh, from the 100 years ago till now, they're still powerful. And they only do this kind of meeting, which projects that uh, they are only the strong powers. However, we've seen the trend where a lot of countries, similarly, there's Iran, there's other countries, Turkey, Saudi Arabia are trying to participate in this BRICS nation and other developing economies are trying to, de uh, to join this. So how do you see uh, the uh, G7 or at least the super countries, uh, how do you see them going to attract the developing countries into partnering with them? And do you see uh, the Chinese and let's say all this kind of uh, developed BRICS nation attracting more, let's say, developing countries because they offer at least a saying in this kind of world order, let's say, and international affairs more than the G7, which uh, uh, it's, it's a different kind of rich kind of countries. Uh, thank you. Okay, so I would collect the third question. Um, if there's any more questions. Michael? Uh, thank you very much. My name is Michael, and I'm from Ghana. I just want to understand, um, should we be worried about the powers willed by these powerful nations, be it Russia, be it um, the, the G7 countries and the powers that um, they exude, uh, bearing in mind the fact that they are also parts of these regional bodies. But when it comes to sitting behind the table and discussing issues like the Russia-Ukraine war, we realize that the regional bodies like the EU the, and multilateral uh, organizations like the UN don't seem to have much say in it because these countries like Russia are still bent on using their hard power uh, means of international relations and politics. And so should we be worried about the excessive power wield by uh, these countries? Thank you. I'm going to take one more question because then you have some more time to answer and there was one more, so please. <laughs> yeah, so um, good afternoon. Um, my name is Simran and I'm also from the ICD. So the question I want to ask is, in your presentation, you were talking about the declining role of international institutions. Um, here I want to just ask about uh, why India, like a country with like so much of population, is still not part of the United Nations Security Council. So I mean, if you could just give us a little bit more about that, yeah. OK, thank you all for your questions. Hunt is uh, still writing answers. Um, if you're ready, you, you have the floor. Oh, yeah. Representative of Armenia and, 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 and mm, in the region. Armenians are in the European nation. As a nation, we are part of Europe by language in the European. As a nation, we have been fought in the Armenian mountain chain. Now it is named Anatolia. And 90 percent of our lands now is, after the genocide, is in the territory of Turkey. Turkish tapes, Seljuks, came to the region. This is well known for on the 11th century. At least two nations. There are a lot of nations there, for example, Assyrians, Georgians, etc. But at least two nations, Armenian and Greeks, they have been fighting with that 500, 600 years. That's the history. Historically, our country became, was divided in two parts. The bigger part was in the under domination of Osmanic Empire, and the smaller part under Persia, Iran. And then, the eastern part was occupied by Russia. After 1990, when we became the independent country, our strife and dreams was, as a small nation, to be of the member of the world community, to escape of the dominancy of local power. Well, in the case of Armenia, we were very, very good integrating in a good process to be to become a member of the European Union. And believe me, we were number one by the discipline in order to implementing values of Europe to change the laws. But very soon we started to realize in our region, two countries are power, Turkey and Russia. We have got tremendous amount of 
assistance from Europe, economic one. But the clear vision was we have problem with Turkey and Azerbaijan. They declare they are the same nation. They are Turks generally. And what we can do with them? Well, both of them, they have 90 million population. Armenia is only free. What we can do with them? We again starting to be to be uh, to rely on Russians and the Russians, as usually being a regional power, yes, they have their policy. They are sometimes playing with that. We don't know. You don't know what what what, what will be solution for you. But to me, to my mind, you know, that's a historical change. People, we cannot see any other effective solution for us. We have very good relationship with the United States. So what? We have a real and concrete danger to be survived, to not allow to repeat the genocide of 1915. That's the case for Armenia. Uh, the question on the, the, from the Lebanon, you know, the question you raise, mm, mm, well, G7 countries, China and Russia, you know, China is not member of G7. But its economy is higher, is bigger than the economy of the United States. Of course, in the, in the current prices, it's less. United States GDP is $22 trillion, and China's GDP is 70.7, .7, practically $18 trillion. With PP, PPP coefficient, China's economy is 26, and the United States is 22. By the way, this question is connected with the question on India, right? And India's economy is already $10 trillion. It is number three in the world. And by the way, India's economy is the most, the, it grows faster than the others. You know, and it is obvious that in 20 years from now, in 10 years from now, China will be number one in all spheres by, by the logic. In 25 years now, India will be number one. That's for sure. That's for sure. And could you imagine India with the population, right now it is 1.3 billion, and China is 1.45 billion. Each of them, they has their own house. They are consuming so much products that, like here in the West. Could you imagine the industrial pressure on the earth? on there, what to do with that? I can tell you, the world economically is not ready seeing China and India growing so fast. And I think that's, that's, the, that's the reason, that's the explanation, the logic that we do not realize that we are not including them in the G7. Even more, a country which has a 20% of world's population is not a member of the Security Council of UN, which is wrong. What they are showing right now in China or India in terms of economic development is remarkable. But we are afraid of such, a, such intensive and aggressive growth. Of, of course, we are not envy that, look, in India, people are living, they have very good living standards. But what is going to happen with the warming of our planet? What, are we ready for that? Per capita GBD in the Western part of the world making something like fifty, fifty-five thousand dollars per, per person. Imagine India with the $55,000 per capita GDP. Now, now this is increasing. It is $8,000 already by PPP. That imagine, 50, 60, what is going to happen? How in Indonesia, which is a growing population, I don't know the figure for India. In Indonesia, each year, forest areas are reducing by 1.5%. Last 12 years, starting from 2010 in Indonesia, last 12 years, forests have been decreased 20%. Look what is going on the pandemic. Last various illnesses like COVID, like uh, flu, you know, this uh, um, birds flu. These infections are coming from the fauna, from the flora. Yes, we are killing the flora, the fauna. The apes, they don't, or uh, AIDS, you know. The apes or 
representatives of fauna. They don't have a place to live. They are eliminating, but it doesn't, it doesn't concern to the microbes, you know. The microbes, each, each representative of a fauna has himself and microbes. These microbes, biologically, are transferring to us. And I, I, I am sure that the COVID is the not last case. If it is continuous like that, we are going to get more severe, uh, severe pandemics, different pandemics, each two, three, five years. I don't know the answer of, on your question in terms of what is what will be the end, et cetera, et cetera. I don't know. Maybe, maybe in 10 years from now, we will come to the situation saying that, people, we have to rationalize our consumption. We didn't find another planet. And this planet has its own capacity. It is 145 million square kilometers. Nothing more than that. We have to live here. Last 100 years, well, just for your information, uh, we had a, 100 years ago, we had a, uh, something like 1 billion Christians. Now we have 1 billion 800 million. Despite the co population of Christians in Europe was increasing in the medieval, in England or in France, they used to have a 7, 8, 10 kids. 100 years ago, we had just 220 20 million Muslims. Now, they have 2 million. They, both of them are 2 million. Moreover, they are stimulating. Are you go, uh, how we are going to regulate that? I'm sure that we are not going to kill each other. But I don't know the concrete and efficient ways how it will be solved. But, but nobody's, nobody thinks about that, you know. Nobody takes care. Like any, nothing happened. Look what happened in in, in Berlin, 40 degree, 40 degree. In Yerevan, we are, you had the 41. That was not the case for Armenia. It's a mountain. It's a like Switzerland. You know, it's, it's not so hot country. You know, and you don't know what to do when it's 41, 42. You don't know what to do. You started to think that it's better to be in Siberia. At least you have a cold weather. But you have to have a uh, uh, warm, uh, 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 to warm your apartment, your body, etc. Cetera, et cetera. But much more easier in this case. But when you have a hot weather and you don't know how it could be decreased. And, uh, uh, and here there was a question, China, Russia, power. You know, I think, I think, I think in China and Russia, they are clever. Uh, they are well, going to develop relations, but step by step, especially China. China, uh, China, uh, Chinese are not active. There are, they, are, they have so, so big pension, you know, so big pension. I don't know if you had, a, if you had a relations with Chinese. For example, I had that. That uh, they don't have emotions. They don't have emotions. Never, you don't understand what is the emotion, you know. But they are well. But, but they are doing efficient. In China, even you cannot uh, guess what is the age of a person to whom you speak. You know, yeah, really, really. But I see that, that they are creating civilization. They are creating civilization. It's not the case. 15 years ago, I couldn't say that they are they were cheating technologies. Nowadays, it's not like this. In terms of patents, in terms of brand registration, patent applications, China is several times bigger than the United States. Several times. Of course, they realize that there are resources in Russia. Well, so they are going to exchange resources with the intellectual capacity, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the decision of Russia to sell energy resources in rubles will decrease at the end of this year the area of dollar by 10%. Dollar was 63% of the international reserves of the old central banks and 85% of the international trade. Despite the volume, the specific weight of US economy, last 50 years decreased from 42% to 20, 21. 
So that will be that will be a problem for dollar. Are they going to create their own currency union? Well, I don't know some things, but you know, I think if India solves the small territory disputes with with, with China, there are four disputes over there. Yeah, so that will be power. That will be power. 